Hi. Um, if you have five minutes, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a book that I've written. It's called Constructional Change in English, and it has just been published by the Cambridge University Press. It is so new, I don't even have a paper copy of it myself, but uh, you can Google Constructional Change and um, uh, you will find a link to Google Books and you can read parts of it online. So, um, why exactly should you be reading this book? I think reading it might be worth your time if you're interested in things like construction, grammar, language change, or corpus linguistics. And what I try to do in the book is to explain how construction grammar as a theory of linguistic knowledge is usefully applied to issues like language change. Um, so, how do grammatical constructions change over time? What can we learn about language in general? if we study changing constructions, and so on and so forth. Um, the theoretical frameworks that I'm using in the book, first of all, Goldberg-style construction grammar, then uh, grammaticalization research, as in the work of Elizabeth Traugott and colleagues, and, of course, usage-based linguistics, um, as championed by Joan Bybee, Paul Hopper, and others. Right. That's what you can expect. Um, methodologically, I take an approach that is quantitative and corpus-based. Now to the main point of the book. What's the main point? Um, well, language change is usually thought of as systemic. You change one bit in a language and something else has to change too, so that the whole system is back in balance. From a constructional perspective, I think that that is not necessarily expected. Um, constructions are form-meaning pairs that speakers remember in rich exemplar-like detail, and any such construction may very well change in any one of its aspects, like its form, or its meaning, or its frequency, or its sociolinguistic characteristics, without there being ripple effects through the entire language system. And to capture this idea, I propose the following definition of constructional change. Here is um, Constructional change seizes a symbolic unit. It operates on one construction and it alters that construction in terms of its form, so its morphology or its syntax, its function, um, its meaning, any aspect of its frequency, like its type frequency or its text frequency, and also its distribution in the community. Um, so who uses that construction. Or indeed, constructional change may affect any combination of these. Right um, Now, um, the central idea here is that constructional change operates on a single symbolic unit, and it goes without saying that later on there may indeed be ripple effects. It may affect multiple constructions, but not necessarily so. Right. Um, why is it useful to have a term such as constructional change? What I argue in the book is that constructional change defined like that um, is not the same as, for instance, grammaticalization, nor would it be the same as language change writ large. The value of a concept like constructional change only becomes apparent when you apply it to the analysis of empirical data, and that's what I do in the main chapters of the book. Construction grammar most of you will know as a descriptive framework for syntax, but actually uh, it's been designed for all levels of linguistic uh, structure, from the smallest meaningful units to the very largest meaningful units. And so the empirical case studies in the book range from phenomena in allomorphy to word formation and finally to syntax. And I use these topics as an excuse to play around with a variety of corpus linguistic methods that I find particularly interesting. For instance, uh, amongst other things, I use motion charts like this one here. Um, so, all right, are they moving? Move. Voila. Um, right, so... Um, what you see here are uh, parenthetical constructions with concessive subordinating conjunctions, uh, though, although, while, and if. And you see them becoming more similar or more dissimilar over time. So, for instance, here you see that though and although are getting very close, and while and if they move towards the outer edges 
of the graph. Fun stuff. Right. Um, I hope that you will find something in the book that interests you. And if you have comments or criticisms, I would be extremely happy to hear from you. So here's my email. Read the book, write me an email, and uh, I'll write you an email back. Promise. <laughs>